Hi, my name is Ai, author of the Heroes 4 book series, amateur music producer, and longtime gamer. I've played Quake since October 1998, so over 17 years at the time of this video. Right now, you're watching some highlights of me playing. We have an extremely wide range of choices these days, so I'm going to take you through many of them while I rearrange my top 20. At first, my top 20 was based on what I liked most. I'm just going to have a top 10 now though. The top 20 is going to be the mice I've recommended most. Each time I review something new, I'll put it in as a prediction, and then lower or raise it, depending how many times I recommend it. Make sure you have a pen and pad ready so you can write down the mice you want to check out, or you can click the links on screen, which will open in a new window for the main review. Let's quickly get a few mice out of the way. The Steel Series Sensei has a great shape, but the sensor is outdated and there are now better options. The Logitech G502 is too heavy for most gamers, although it is a great mouse in many ways. The Razer Abyssus has a great shape and weight, but the sensor seems to have issues. The Rockhead Tyon and Rockhead Nith are both great mice for MMO, but they are let down by their sensors, and again, I don't recommend them often. The Rockhead Cova is very much a niche mouse, and I'm not a fan. The Razer Mumba Tournament Edition has a great shape, good amount of buttons, amazing lights, but the sensor can't detect tiny movements. It also seems to have a bit of a delay, and a weird Z-axis bug. Fine for general use, no good for competitive gaming. The Final Mouse Classic Ergo 2016 is basically a Razer Imperator, but with good buttons and a good sensor. I just can't bring myself to recommend that shape. The Cougar 700M, while a lot of fun to use for something different, is definitely a niche mouse, plus it has a laser sensor. The Corsair M65 is too heavy, has an ugly place sniper button, and a weird shape, so I won't be recommending that very often, despite high quality in other areas. The Corsair Qatar is decent, but very few people seem to want it. The Cooler Master Elcor is a good mouse, but the firmware puts me off a bit, so I recommend an alternative. The Cooler Master Sentinel 3 is a bit too heavy and unbalanced, but otherwise it's good. I just haven't needed to recommend it yet. The Cooler Master Zona 2 is super niche, so I haven't recommended that more than once. The Cougar 230M is special, because of the amount of highlights I got with it, but it doesn't seem to suit many people's needs. The Steel Series Kinzu V3 is good, but mostly suited to people with small hands, many of which seem to want something else. And the Corsair Sabre is very good in many ways, but the wings make it a niche mouse. Now, before we move on to the top 20, to help me grow the channel, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It'll help me get the attention of the big companies for more review items. And also, when you're buying products from Amazon, if you could use my Amazon affiliate links in the video descriptions, that would be greatly appreciated. And of course, someday, maybe I can do this full time. The way I'm going to do this is describe each mouse a little, give some recommendation, and then if I have reviewed it, I'll link to it. Okay, here we go. At number 20, the Cougar 550M. It has a really nice shape, one of the top sensors, and good buttons. The only drawback is that we prefer lighter mice, and it is about 120 grams. I'd recommend this mouse for medium to large hands, all grip styles, and FPS games. At number 19, the Rapu V300. This is a personal favorite of mine. With amazing buttons, mouse wheel, and textures, it really does feel good, but the quality control and sensor problems? I'm a little bit hesitant to recommend it. It might be good for people with small to medium hands, all grips, MOBA, and FPS games. At number 18, the Cougar 450M. This mouse shows that Cougar is going in the right direction. If they made it all black, use something other than glossy plastic, and remove the buttons on the right, it'd be a lot higher. Really good mouse with a 3310 sensor and Omron switches. It might be good for medium and large hands, all grips, MOBA, and FPS. And number 17, the Roque Cairo. Its only real problem is that the weight is unbalanced, and maybe it's a little bit too heavy too. The sensor can be made to spin out, but it's hard to do. Its main selling point is that it's modular. You can choose which side you have the buttons on, or you can have them on both, or none. So it's a great concept, and I hope Rockout bring out more like this. It might be good for people with small to medium hands, all grips, and mainly MOBA. And number 16, the Zowie ZA series. This is a bit of a prediction, because it's a top quality mouse, I'm just not entirely sure how many people will like the shape yet. It might be good for small to large hands, depending on which one you get. I'd say palm and claw grips, and FPS. And number 15, the Myonix Caster, 3310 sensor, Omron switches, rubberized materials, there is so much right with this mouse, but the unsafe shape prevents recommendation. It might be good for medium to large hands, possibly palm or fingertip grip, mobile, and FPS. At number 14, the Logitech G402. Good sensor, good buttons, good size. The shape is a bit odd though, but it's loved by many. A good mouse, just not a top recommendation. It might be good for medium to large hands, all grips, MOBA, and FPS. And number 13, the Scorpion M6 600 made by Genius. This is a prediction. I'm waiting on them to update it in June, and that's when I'll review it. But for now, it's a good cheap mouse with a 3310 sensor, and it might be good for all hand sizes depending on grip, and MOBA, and FPS. At number 12, the Steel Series Rival 100. Safe shape, decent sensor and software, nice materials, and RGB lights. Good, but not great. But cheap and suits a lot of people. 
It might be good for all hand sizes, depending on grip, and mainly FPS, but possibly MOBA too. At number 11, the Logitech G900. Another prediction, this is the best all-round mouse you can get. The problem is the price. Amazing sensor, good buttons, modular design for left and right handers, great software, not too heavy, just a bit awkward in shape. And of course, it's the only wireless mouse that I'd be happy to use in Quake. It might be good for small to medium hands, all grips, all games, including MMORPG. In fact, I would say this is number one for MMOs. And number 10, the Cougar 300M. Cheap, simple, light, rubberized, decent enough sensor, and the better option over the Cooler Master Elcor and Mizar. I've recommended it quite often already. It might be good for all hand sizes, depending on grip, and I'd say MOBA and FPS. And number 9, the SteelSeries Rival 300, one of the big mice. Great sensor, comfortable shape, used to have some issues with the sides wearing out, and I'm still hearing a few complaints about it, but it's one of the top recommended mice. It might be good for medium to large hands, depending on grip, and mainly FPS. And number 8, the Fnatic Flick G1, 3310 sensor, on-run switches, rubberized textures, decent software, just a lift-off distance bug and a shape that's slanted upward. Definitely a favourite of mine, and with some slight improvements, it could go higher. Here's to hoping the Fnatic Flick G2 addresses these concerns. It might be good for small to large hands, depending on grip, and it's for FPS and MOBA. At number 7, the Rocket Comb Pure Military. Not the optical or laser versions, the military with the 3310 sensor. Get the Naval Storm, it looks better and has less chance of sensor rattle. This mouse has the best scroll wheel of all mice I've used, great buttons, nice materials, just a slightly odd shape, and it's fairly expensive. This can be used in palm grip with small hands, and it's usually my top recommendation for claw and fingertip grippers with medium hands. FPS, MOBA, maybe even MMO, it's a great mouse. At number 6, the Logitech G302 or G303. The G303 has the better sensor, of course, but I used the G302 for 9 months and loved it. It's still one of my most recommended mice, and the G302 seems to have less issues with sensor rattle. The shape is either loved or hated, so be wary of this one, but it has the best buttons of all mice. Small, lightweight design, still amazing. It might be good for people with small to large hands, again, depending on grip style, and it's for MOBA and FPS. At number 5, the Zowie FK2. This is a prediction, as it's currently my top mouse, but I'm not sure who it will suit because of the low design and buttons on both sides. Still, Zowie quality, 3310 sensor, definitely a mouse to look at. It might be good for people with small to medium hands. If you have a large, look at the FK1 and FK1+. Plus. And number 4, the Razer Death Adder Chroma. This is a large, safe mouse with the most responsive sensor that I've ever used, and according to reports, the build quality issues are a myth. I'm not saying they don't happen, they definitely do, but that's for all mice. Death Adders actually have one of the lowest return rates. The difference is that they sell so many more, that even if they do have a small percentage being returned, it seems like way more than any other mouse. But percentage-wise, these are fine. It might be good for people with medium to large hands, all grips, FPS, and mobile. At number 3, the Dream Machines DM1 Pro. The shape of the Steel Story Sensei, but with the 3310 optical sensor, and no buttons on the right. This is also one of my personal favourites. It might be good for small to large hands, depending on grips, and I'd say it's for FPS and MOBA. And number 2, the Gigabyte XM300. Great shape, 3988 sensor, nice materials, decent weight, and just so, so cheap. Other than some build quality concerns, it's such a safe choice. Really impressed with this mouse, and it's one of the most recommended, especially if you want a death adder or rival shape. It might be good for medium to large hands, all grips, FPS, and MOBA. And at number 1, by far my most recommended and safest choice for FPS, the Zowie EC2A. This is now currently number 2 on my personal list, edged out because the FK2 is smaller, but otherwise this is still the king. 3310 sensor, safe, comfortable shape with a great balance, loved by most people, so it will most likely stay the most recommended. My aim really did improve with it. The Zowie FK2 is the only mouse that has rivaled it in terms of aim. Good for all grip styles, usually for small and medium hands, but if you have large hands, you should look at the EC1A. So that's my new top 20 for recommendations, which will change as I get new mice, of course. I hope it's given you some mice to check out, and remember, I'll keep the list updated at rocketjumpninja.com. If the site ever goes down, please let me know via Facebook or Twitter. You'll find the links to those in the description. And if you like the music playing, you can find some of my work on soundcloud.com slash zyism. You can also check out my books at theheroesfall.com. Again, the links are in the description. And don't forget to use my Amazon links. Special thanks to M-Wave, the online retailer in Australia, for their support. And also to Corsair, Cooler Master, Cougar, Rocket, Fnatic Gear, Logitech, and Zara for sending me some products for a review. That's it for now, my name is Zai, aka The Maestro, and again, thank you for that nickname, love it. Plenty more reviews coming, like this one, and I'll catch you in the next.